Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pond, the chemistry guru. Now in chemical bonding, we have learned that we have a few types of intermolecular forces between simple molecules. The first type will be instantaneous dipole-induced dipole interaction between non-polar molecules. Some schools will call this dispersion forces or van der Waals forces. Now we have another type of intermolecular interaction, which is permanent dipole-permanent dipole interaction between polar molecules. And we have a third type of intermolecular interaction, which is called hydrogen bond for molecules which contains HF bond, HO bond, and HN bond. So in this video, we want to spend a bit of time to go through the factors affecting hydrogen bonds. All right, as mentioned previously, molecules that can form hydrogen bond between molecules will be molecules that contain HF bond, HO bond, and HN bond. So in general, when we look at molecules and it contains any of these three bonds that we have mentioned previously, then we know that the intermolecular interaction between these molecules will be hydrogen bond. Now, if you're given two molecules which can both form hydrogen bond between molecules, then how do I decide which has a higher boiling point or which has a higher melting point? So the factors affecting hydrogen bond will be here. We have two factors affecting the strength of hydrogen bond. The first one, it is the extensiveness of the hydrogen bond. Now, the extensiveness of hydrogen bond simply means what is the number of hydrogen bond each molecule can form with the neighbors. So if a molecule can form more extensive hydrogen bond, that means per molecule it can form more hydrogen bond with more neighbors, then we say that the hydrogen bond will be more extensive. So during melting or boiling, we need to pump in more energy to break more hydrogen bonds per molecule. So in general, it will mean that the boiling point or melting point tends to be higher. And extensiveness of the hydrogen bond, it is affected by the maximum number of hydrogen bond each molecule can form. So later we will have an example to try to illustrate this. Now the second factor which affects the strength of the hydrogen bond will be the polarity of the bond. Now this is related to the difference in the electronegativity between HF bond, HO bond and HN bond, which is being summarized here because HF bond is more polar than HO bond, which is in turn more polar than HN bond. So therefore, molecules which contain HF bonds will have a stronger hydrogen bond between molecules as compared to molecules which contain HO bond, which in turn has stronger hydrogen bond as compared to molecules which contain HN bond. Again, later we will have another example to try to illustrate this factor. Now comparing these two factors, what is important is we have to know which factor is more important, which factor is less important. So therefore, we always consider the more important factor first. So extensiveness, is actually more important than polarity. So the first thing that we have to consider comparing two molecules which can both form hydrogen bond would be the extensiveness. Which molecule can form more extensive hydrogen bond? If the extensiveness is different, then the strength of the hydrogen bond will be just purely based on extensiveness. The molecule that can form more hydrogen bond per molecule will have more extensive hydrogen bond, so therefore the boiling point or melting point tends to be higher. If extensiveness is the same, then we look at polarity. If I look at the molecule, does it contain HF bond, HO bond, or HN bond? And we can do the comparison involving the strength of the hydrogen bond based on this guideline here. All right, let's look at the first factor, which is the extensiveness of the hydrogen bond, which we have mentioned previously, it is related to the maximum number of hydrogen bond each molecule can form with its neighbor. Now, if I want to compare the following melting point trends, ethanol, the melting point, it is minus 114.1 degrees Celsius. Ethanoic acid, the melting point, it is 16.6 degrees C. Ethane dioic acid, the melting point is 190 degrees Celsius. So we notice these three compounds contain two carbon each, but with different number of OH groups and C double bond O groups, and there is an increase in the melting point. So what we want to do is we want to make use of extensiveness of the hydrogen bond to explain this melting point trend. Now, what we do is we draw each of these molecules out and we consider what is the maximum number of hydrogen bond each molecule can form with its neighbor. So for example, for the first case, if I have ethanol, of course the focus will be on the OH bond because this is the bond which is polar and hydrogen, it is attached to oxygen. Hydrogen, it is a delta positive charge. Oxygen, it is a delta minus charge. So this OH bond, will be able to form hydrogen bond with neighboring ethanol. And what we can consider is the total number of hydrogen bond this molecule can form because I have a hydrogen here, which is delta positive charge. So therefore it can attract 
and form a hydrogen bond with a neighboring oxygen. So I just draw this hydrogen bond, but I won't draw the other molecule, otherwise this entire structure will look very cluttered. So I know that I can have a hydrogen bond here formed between this hydrogen and a neighboring oxygen. Now, this oxygen actually has two lone pairs. Each of these lone pairs can form a hydrogen bond with a neighboring hydrogen from an OH group. So I can form another hydrogen bond here, and I can form another hydrogen bond here. So if I consider the total number of hydrogen bonds ethanol can form, actually ethanol can form a total of one, two, three, three hydrogen bonds. So this guy he has a maximum of three hydrogen bonds, and it is related to the extensiveness and the melting point of ethanol. Now how about ethanoic acid? Now ethanoic acid, you notice I have a C double bond O group. This oxygen has two lone pairs and I have a OH group. Now because this OH group and this OH group in ethanol, it is effectively the same group. So therefore the number of hydrogen bonds this OH group can form, it is already three hydrogen bonds, exactly the same as this guy, right? So I know that this hydrogen, which is delta positive charge, can form a hydrogen bond with a neighboring oxygen. So I have one hydrogen bond here. This oxygen has two lone pairs, so it can form hydrogen bond with a neighboring hydrogen of an OH group. So I will have one hydrogen bond here, another hydrogen bond here. So altogether, these OH groups already can form three hydrogen bonds. Now remember, I also have this oxygen, which is delta minus charge, because it is attached to carbon, which is less electronegative. So this oxygen also has two lone pairs, and each of these lone pairs, again, it can form a hydrogen bond with a hydrogen from a neighboring OH group. So I can form another hydrogen bond here. I can form another hydrogen bond here. So you notice for ethanoic acid, because it has two oxygens, so therefore it can use different parts of the same molecule to form hydrogen bonds with the neighbor. So in total, the maximum number of hydrogen bonds ethanoic acid can form will be five hydrogen bonds. So let me write this down. This can form a maximum of five hydrogen bonds. So therefore, as compared to ethanol, ethanoic acid can form more extensive hydrogen bond. So per molecule, you need to pump in more energy to break more hydrogen bonds per molecule, hence the melting point for ethanoic acid will be higher than ethanol. Now how about ethane dioic acid? Now ethane dioic acid, it is an acid group directly bonded to another acid group. Now actually this is virtually just two acid groups combined together. Actually we know that the number of hydrogen bonds ethane dioic acid can form will be double that of ethanoic acid. Because ethanoic acid only has one acid group and this acid group already can form five hydrogen bonds. So if I have two acid groups, then this ethane dioic acid should be able to form a maximum of 10 hydrogen bonds. So let us try to run through this here. Now again, I have this hydrogen, which can form a hydrogen bond with a neighboring oxygen. This oxygen has two lone pair, can form hydrogen bond with two neighboring OH groups. And I have this oxygen with two lone pair, can form a hydrogen bond with a neighbor. This can also form a hydrogen bond with a neighbor. Now, the other acid group, it is effectively the same. I have two lone pairs on oxygen, can form one hydrogen bond and two hydrogen bond. This oxygen also has two lone pair. So another hydrogen bond, another hydrogen bond. So finally, this hydrogen can also form a hydrogen bond with a neighboring molecule. So if you go and count the total number of hydrogen bonds, this guy can form a maximum of 10 hydrogen bonds. So you notice ethane dioic acid because it has two acid groups and virtually this is surrounded by groups that can form hydrogen bond. So virtually any part of this ethane dioic acid can form a hydrogen bond with a neighbor. So because the maximum number of hydrogen bonds ethane dioic acid can form is more than ethanoic acid. So we say that ethane dioic acid can form more extensive hydrogen bond. Per molecule, we will need to pump in more energy to break more hydrogen bonds per molecule. So therefore, the melting point for ethane dioic acid will be much higher, it will be 190 degrees Celsius. Now the second factor will be polarity, because in terms of electronegativity, fluorine it is the most electronegative element, followed by oxygen, followed by nitrogen. So therefore we know that HF bond it is the most polar, or there's a biggest difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and fluorine. So HF bond it is the most polar, as compared to HO bond, as compared to HN bond. So therefore, we say that molecules that contain HF bond, the hydrogen bond will be stronger as compared to molecules that contain HO bond, which in turn, the hydrogen bond will be stronger as compared to molecules which contain the HN bond. So let us use a comparison. If I want to compare the boiling point, in this case, between ethyl amine and 
ethanol. So this is a two carbon alcohol versus a two carbon amine. Ethyl amine boiling point is 16.6 .6 degrees Celsius. Ethanol boiling point it is higher, 78.4 degrees Celsius. So how do we explain the difference in the boiling point? The first thing is we know that both of them can form hydrogen bond because of the NH bond and the OH bond. Then what we have to consider first is actually the extensiveness of the hydrogen bond because if there is a difference in the extensiveness of the hydrogen bond between these two guys, then we will just use extensiveness to do the explanation. Now remember extensiveness, it is the factor which is more important. So we always have to consider extensiveness first only when extensiveness is the same, then we look at polarity. Now comparing extensiveness involving this ethyl amine versus ethanol. Now ethyl amine, what I have is now I have two hydrogen, which is delta positive charge because it is attached to electronegative nitrogen. Now each of these hydrogen can form a hydrogen bond with a neighbor. So this can form one hydrogen bond with a neighbor. This can form another hydrogen bond with a neighbor. Now this nitrogen has one lone pair. So I have one lone pair they can form a hydrogen bond with a neighboring ethyl amine group. So in total, ethyl amine can form a maximum of three hydrogen bonds. So let me write this down. This guy is a max of three hydrogen bonds. Now how about ethanol? Ethanol, remember what we have gone through earlier. Ethanol can form one hydrogen bond because of this hydrogen, which is delta positive charge, two lone pairs. So each of these lone pairs can form a hydrogen bond. So if I go and consider the maximum number of hydrogen bonds for ethanol, ethanol can form maximum three hydrogen bonds. So this guy can form a maximum of three hydrogen bonds. So what we notice is if I compare these two guys, the maximum number of hydrogen bond, it is the same. So therefore they have the same extensiveness. If extensiveness is the same, then we have to move on to the second part. We have to look at the polarity between this NH bond and OH bond. So now we have to look at the polarity. We know that HF bond is more polar than HO bond, which is in turn more polar than HN bond. And how does it affect the strength of the hydrogen bond? Now remember, if I consider OH bond versus NH bond, which is in this case, because oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, so there is a bigger difference in electronegativity between an OH bond, and there's a smaller difference in electronegativity between the NH bond. So therefore, OH bond is more polar, NH bond is less polar. Now, if OH bond is more polar, what this means is oxygen will be a bigger delta minus and hydrogen will be a bigger delta plus in terms of the magnitude of the charge. Nitrogen will be a smaller delta minus and hydrogen will be a smaller delta plus in terms of charge. So maybe for example, the charge in this case for oxygen will be a minus 0 0.8. Hydrogen will be a plus 0 0.8. While nitrogen maybe is a minus 0 0.6. Hydrogen, it is a plus 0 0.6. The magnitude of the charge will be smaller because there's a smaller difference in electronegativity in the NH bond. And the magnitude of the charge here will be greater because there's a bigger difference in electronegativity in this OH bond. So if I come back to this molecule here and I try to compare the strength of the hydrogen bond between the molecule, if I consider the charge of nitrogen, we already know that nitrogen has a smaller delta minus charge and hydrogen has a smaller delta plus charge. So this N has a smaller delta minus charge and the hydrogen has a smaller delta plus charge. And I have a hydrogen which is delta positive charge here and a neighboring lone pair of a nitrogen which is delta minus here. So therefore I can form this hydrogen bond between this lone pair of nitrogen and hydrogen. And because this nitrogen has a smaller delta minus charge and this hydrogen has a smaller delta positive charge, so a smaller delta minus charge attracting a smaller delta plus charge, we know that this hydrogen bond will be weaker. So let me write this here. This will be a weaker hydrogen bond because I will have a smaller delta minus charge attracting a smaller delta positive charge. Now, how about alcohol? Now, in the case of ethanol, we know that oxygen has a bigger delta minus charge. So I draw a bigger delta minus charge here and hydrogen has a bigger delta positive charge. And this oxygen, same thing, bigger minus charge and a bigger positive charge. So I noticed I can also form this hydrogen bond here between this hydrogen and the lone pair on oxygen. So let me put in the hydrogen bond first. This will be the hydrogen bond formed between these two alcohols. And because this hydrogen, it is a bigger delta positive charge and this oxygen, it is a bigger delta minus charge. 
So therefore, this hydrogen bond or this attraction between the bigger plus and the bigger minus will be a stronger hydrogen bond. So I know that this hydrogen bond will be a stronger hydrogen bond because I have a bigger delta plus charge on hydrogen attracting a bigger delta minus charge on oxygen. Now that is the reason why when we compare molecules which contains OH bond versus molecules which contains NH bond, the hydrogen bond between molecules that can form OH bond tends to be stronger, while the hydrogen bond between molecules that form NH bond tends to be weaker. So for ethanol, we have a stronger hydrogen bond between molecules, so therefore more energy is required to overcome this stronger hydrogen bond, and the boiling point for ethanol will be higher than the boiling point for ethyl amine. Alright, so that was the discussion involving factors affecting hydrogen bond. Remember, we have two factors. The first factor is extensiveness of the hydrogen bond. The second factor, it is the polarity of the bond. Now remember, extensiveness is more important, so we always need to look at extensiveness first. And only when extensiveness is the same, then we look at polarity. Now if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.